Okay, so 10.3, the slope and tangent lines of parametric equations. So given a curve C, defined parametrically, so X is in terms of T, Y is in terms of T, then the slope of the curve at any given point can be found by the value of the derivative. Okay, so dy dx, we have to find the derivative of our function y, that's in terms of t, and divide that by the derivative of our function x. Always given, obviously, that our derivative of x is not zero. Okay, so for the curve given by the two functions, x equals theta minus sine theta, and y equals one minus cosine theta, find the derivative. So remember, we talked about our parameters being t or theta, okay? So it's not a polar equation, it's a different parameter. So first we find the derivative of y, so the derivative of one minus cosine x would be positive sine theta, I said x, I meant theta. Derivative of x with respect to theta would be one minus cosine of theta. And that's it, it's very simple, dy dx. Derive your function y, divide it by the derivative of your function x. Okay, so now evaluate the derivative at pi. So dy dx, and of course that's our parameter, so we plug in pi for theta. So sine of pi, one minus cosine of pi. Sine of pi is zero, divided by two. Okay, so let's think about what a derivative of zero represents. This was one of the AP questions you did. If our derivative is zero, then graphically there's a horizontal tangent line. And where would it occur? So we would need to find x of pi and y of pi. So plugging that into our original, pi minus the sine of pi would give us an x-coordinate of pi and then 1 minus the cosine of pi would give us 2 so the horizontal tangent line occurs at the point pi comma 2 okay what else does this tell us horizontal tangent lines because it's a smooth curve this would be a max or a min okay so we know that this would be a turning point on the graph of the function. And we would be able to determine the behavior of the graph. And we'll do that in class together. Okay, so higher order derivatives, our second derivative. And if we're gonna talk about what a graph looks like, we need to be able to determine concavity. So to find the second derivative, okay, remember our functions are defined in terms of another parameter. So the second derivative, the derivative with respect to x of our first derivative. So now notice what we have to do here. We find the derivative of the first derivative using whatever rules we need. Okay, so power rule, power, quotient rule, chain rule. Once we find that derivative though, we have to divide by the derivative of x with respect to t, or maybe with respect to theta, if that's what our parameter is. This, we would have already found, okay? That's no work, we would have already found that. That's your original dx dt. So let's look at an example of that. All right, so from the first example, this is what we found our first derivative to be. So now to find the second derivative, our parameter here is theta. So we're gonna find the derivative with respect to theta of this. Okay, so this derivative uses the quotient rule. Bottom times the derivative of the top, which is positive cosine, minus the top function times the derivative of the bottom function. Derivative of the bottom function is positive sine theta all over bottom function squared. Okay, I'm gonna distribute my cosine, so I get cosine of theta minus <laughs> cosine squared theta. 
minus sine squared theta all over this quantity squared. Okay, now I see squared trig functions, so I be, should be thinking the Pythagorean identity. So for here, if I factor out a negative 1, I'll be left with cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta all divided by my denominator. Okay, this goes to 1. So now I have cosine theta minus 1 all divided by 1 minus cosine theta quantity squared. Okay, when we compare these numerator and denominators, the numerator, if I factor out another negative 1, is the exact opposite of one of the factors of the denominator. Okay, so the derivative of dy dx is negative 1 over 1 minus cosine theta, but we have that added step. So now I have to take this and divide it by dx d theta. Okay, and dx d theta is our original. We already found that to be 1 minus cosine theta. So negative 1 divided by 1 minus cosine theta. So now we'll multiply by the reciprocal. And my final answer, I'll just put it up here. The second derivative is negative 1. Whoops. Negative 1 all over quantity 1 minus cosine theta squared. Okay, so if we think about the behavior of the second derivative, so no matter what my value of theta will be, my denominator will always be positive, my numerator will always be negative. So my second derivative will always be negative, therefore my curve, C, will be concave down on its entire interval. And again, we'll look at the graph of this tomorrow in class. Okay, so now for this curve defined in terms of t, find dy dx. So the derivative, the derivative of y, just using the power rule is 1. The derivative of x using the power rule, 2t plus 3. Okay, so that's our first derivative, very simple to use. Now when I find the second derivative, I derive the first derivative, so I'm going to rewrite that as quantity to the negative first power, all divided by dx dt. Okay, so using my power and chain rule, negative 2t plus 3 to the negative second power times the derivative of the inside, all divided by dx dt is 2t plus 3. So now I'm making this exponent positive by bringing it to the denominator. I get my second derivative is negative 2 divided by 2t plus 3 quantity cubed. All right, and then just evaluate dy dx. And so first and second derivative at t is equal to 0. So complete that problem for homework for me. But almost finished. The only other thing I'd like you to do tonight, just copy down the definition for arc length. There's no more examples, just have this ready for class tomorrow.